A new report out of Forbes reveals that Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny might be one of the biggest flops of all time, of course, being in competition with the Marvels. Let's talk about that on That Park Place. Good morning. I am Jonas J. Campbell. I'm an investigative reporter for That Park Place. I am here with a little ray of sunshine. Uh, Mr. Vashkai, is it a bright and shining day? Uh, not so much in Arizona, <laughs> unfortunately. But uh, hey, it's always bright and shining in my mind when I'm here doing a video with you, Jonas. So, uh, oh, well, thank you very much. Uh, I'm not in Philadelphia, but I do hear that it is always sunny in Philadelphia. <laughs> uh, we're going to talk about uh, this article out of Forbes from Miss Caroline Reed. Uh, she's a senior contributor over there and is one of the best voices in uh, in this film tax credit situation that allows us to actually peer behind the curtain at the Walt Disney Company. Uh, but before we get into this, I want to point out that uh, that we would never know if it weren't for this UK tax credit situation what is going on with these with these uh, Disney movies. They like to talk about revenue. They like to talk about how much money they made at the box office, but they never like to talk about how much it actually costs to make these films. And we know which films have not made money because we know how much they cost now. Believe it or not, uh, uh, Rise of Skywalker, for instance, made a billion dollars at the box office. That sounds great. That sounds great. Until you uh, account for the fact that production was around $500 million dollars so it cost half a billion dollars to make that film and even more on top of that in order to market it let's talk about this uh oh, yes. here uh, again from caroline reed indiana jones whips up a 130 million dollar loss for disney uh and again you should go read the article itself we're not going to read it in its entirety but indiana jones and the dial of destiny failed to cover its cost at the box office according to financial statements released on friday which show that disney spent 134.2 million more on making the movie than it's understood to have received in ticket sales. Dial of Destiny stars Mads Mikkelsen, Antonio Banderas for some reason, and Harrison Ford as the eponymous adventurer who comes out of retirement to track down an ancient time-traveling artifact before it falls into the hands of the people we don't talk about directly on YouTube. The film, which was released in June of last year, is famous for its dramatic train chase featuring a digitally de-aged Ford. It came at a cost as the filings reveal that $79 million was spent on post-production work in the year to the start of April 2023, bringing the movie's total budget to an eye-watering $387.2 million. Oh my goodness. Man. Holy smokes. Oh, that hurts. It didn't translate into fortune and glory for the film. <laughs> Ooh, that's a that's a Temple of Doom reference, if I'm not it mistaken. Is. It is. Oh, my. Uh, despite its blockbuster budget, Dial of Destiny was castigated by critics. It has a 70% score on review aggregator Rotten Tomatoes. I didn't know that. I didn't know it was that well-reviewed. I, 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 I kind of watched it. Wasn't, wasn't much of a fan uh, myself. Uh, they gave an audience rating of 88%, but not enough of them streamed through the turnstiles to cover its production. That is fascinating. How does a movie that is so forgotten get an 88% audience rating on Rotten Tomatoes? Wow. Uh, Vash, did you watch this movie? I did not. <laughs> I did not. You know, uh, I understand. It's part of the job, and we go to these things, but I, I for the life of me, I can't stand my heroes um, being taken uh by these creatives and 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 messed with and altered with in order to forward some political agenda so i i must confess i did not necessarily uh see this film although i know a lot i don't about think it, it had much of an effect that you didn't see it I'll say <laughs> yeah that. exactly it doesn't look like it <laughs> it looks like they needn't quite a uh, uh, of quite a few people in order to <laughs> bring it out of the red right here this is interesting because from what we understand, this is just the production budget that Caroline Reed is uh, is making this assessment on. It doesn't necessarily include marketing and advertising, and that's a lot of money. That can be upwards of $100 million, if not more, especially for this film. We knew there was a lot of promotional tie-ins and so forth. Definitely uh, probably around that $125, $105, $125 million figure, if not more. Oh, uh, I think I, it's more. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. This was, I... this was the first film that Lucasfilm had released in theater since April of 2019. 
And uh, we uh, continue on, but we'll have more to add on this from uh, internal sources that we have from uh, from from a certain California company that we cover frequently here on that part Ooh. place. Well, that's interesting. Uh, if we're going by Carolyn Reed's assessment right here, um, and uh, if we want to necessarily take into account a conservative. Uh, advertising figure, which is about $125 million. That brings us to, uh, in, at least in my estimation, $253 million loss. This was something that I was estimating back in November. And according to even WW Pro, uh, who who posted a tweet on this, highlighting this article right here, he's factoring, he, 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 he was estimating about the same based on Caroline's numbers. And indeed, that's about what I had back in the day at $253 million dollars. Uh, loss right here we're on wow. we're on we were on the right track uh, here jonas that is for sure yeah the the thing that i want to add and we do understand that it's a little difficult to read uh charts when we put them on uh the screen even for our desktop users sometimes it can be a little bit of a struggle but we would, did want to put that up there for a moment if you uh if you want to zoom in if you want to pause and look back that's that's great uh, another comment that I want to pull in from uh, Caroline Reed, although Please. its box office is in similar ballpark to the re receipts of the first three Indiana Jones movies, they were all released in the 1980s and far eclipsed De Dial of Destiny's tally when adjusted for inflation. Right. This, uh, I, I have a feeling that the tax credit situation in, in the UK uh, is they're going to have to change the way that they do this because I think the damage that has been done to the Walt Disney Company here and the way that they like to put their box office receipts into a black box so that no one actually knows how much money they made on each each their strategy been here the strategy that the Walt Disney Company has employed here has been general uh, cultural impact more than it has been the actual ticket sales. They want that big number. They want to spend a lot of money to get that big number so that everyone thinks, oh, well, Disney movies make a lot of money. Therefore, Disney is important. Therefore, they own the market. Therefore, we're going to go to the parks and people are going to spend more on merchandise. They're, they're a little bit more questionable when it comes to actually uh, delivering economically on these movies it is a it is a different strategy not necessarily a strategy i endorse but i do recognize the strategy it just says that these things have to have cultural impact in order to be an effective use of that money doesn't seem like that's the case we're going to go to uh one more comment here from uh movie economics which is caroline reed's uh twitter account which i i highly recommend you go follow anatomy of a box office bust indiana jones and the dial of destiny Disney, Disney's cost, $387.2 million. Disney's rebate, $61 million. Disney's net costs, it cost them about $330 million to make this film. Their box office was $384 million. Disney's box office share, $192. They took home about $200 million of that $384 million with a loss of $135 million on Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. Of course, not counting marketing. Of course, not counting brand damage to the Indiana Jones brand. The best that you can say that this did was that it reminded people how good the older ones used to be, which there's some value in that. I don't think that $384 million worth of, of brand preservation of the previous original three Indiana Jones movies. I don't think that's. Well, oh, I mean, I, forgot. I needed to point out something that is very important to the current Disney situation here. We do have sources from within the Walt Disney Company that reported at the time that there was a disagreement, a schism within the Alan Bergman people and the Dana Walden people within Walt Disney. Uh, the Alan Bergman people saying you should have made a better movie and the Dana Walden people saying you should have marketed this movie better. Mm. Uh, Dana Walden sticking up for Kathleen Kennedy and apparently her track record which uh, the Disney company, as with Marvel Studios, as with Kathleen Kennedy, they like to point to all the work that they did when they were under different people and say, see, I'm still successful, even when their current films are financial failures. Uh, but of course, that is my own analysis. Now I'm going to throw it to you, Vash, since we now have that uh, exclusive information repeated here on that park place. 
No, we got to we got to think too. Uh, the Walt Disney Company probably did. Uh, you know, they they shelled out a bit of uh, money in order to get the full rights to these films, right away from Paramount, right there. So there was probably a, a extra costs associated with that. It's interesting those numbers from Caroline Reed right there, only 192 coming back to the uh, to, to to the you know Walt Disney Company. Uh, from the box office, I actually had about 171 million dollars. So that's that's an interesting kind of kind of thing right there to to be to be that that close. Um, <laughs> uh, but look, I, I mean, th- this is just a disaster. It's a, it's a disaster all around. In that meeting between you know Alan Bergman, Dana Walton, and Kathleen Kennedy, and all these people that came together after the colossal failure that was that film over the season. Again, I mean, this should have made well over a billion dollars. It didn't even come close. You know, we thought some heads surely were going to roll. Uh, that, necess- that necessarily hasn't happened at that level right there, but it was revealed that, you know, like you said, uh, uh, Dana Walden threw her hat into the ring uh, for uh, Kathleen Kennedy right there. Now Bergman wasn't necessarily having it. Uh, it's, 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 it, 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 I, I guess it's a, um, it's a revealing moment for these executives yeah. that might be in contention for the CEO seat. I agree. And, and I think that anyone who sticks up for Kathleen Kennedy's track record since 2012, taking the most successful film franchise of all time and turning it into Disney Star Wars and just how irrelevant Disney Star Wars seems to be in the pop culture conversation, or sorry, current Disney Star Wars seems to be in the pop culture conversation, needs to think about who they're supporting for the CEO position of the Walt Disney Company. But that being said, we want to throw this out to our viewers. Did you watch Indiana Jones of the Dial of Destiny? And if you say yes, did you really watch Indiana Jones of the Dial of Destiny? Uh, what 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 do you think about these massive box office figures? Are they just so high that you just don't even, it's you struggle to comprehend them? Because that is a strategy that the Walt Disney Company also employs, throwing that billion dollar mark out there to hope that people will not notice that that's not a lot of money. Vash, well, here's you got another something? thing. Yeah, well, just one more thing. Here's the other thing. People have been saying, oh, we reduce the budgets. Maybe we actually uh, we actually get our money back on these things. Not necessarily here. How much of the budget? I mean, if you cut this budget by half, you're still not making any money. So it's this is kind of an interesting an interesting dichotomy. But please, in the comments, folks, let us know what you think. Is get it, necessarily reducing the budget going to get them the profitability? Or is it some kind of, uh, I don't know, is it is something internally in the Walt Disney Company that has to be corrected? Uh, especially with regards to the Lucasfilm. That's a very good point. And by the way, that big creative change that they're talking about at the Walt Disney Company, there's only two things that they've said publicly that are are a change in the strategy. One is they have reaffirmed that Bob Iger is going to watch each film at least five times and give notes. And the other is that they have uh, parted ways with Sean Bailey, who was in charge of the live action division. I don't think it was his fault. I'm going to go out on a limb and say that I don't think it was his fault. But... Uh, We will throw that to the comment section to agree or disagree with me there. Of course, like this video if you like this video. Uh, Thank you so much for watching to the end. And consider subscribing to That Park Place for all the news that should be fun. Thanks for watching That Park Place News. For more information, consider checking out www.thatparkplace.com. And don't forget to subscribe, share, like, and send this out on your favorite social media account.